In this presentation, we will record the journal entry related to the retirement of bonds. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. When we talk about the retirement of bonds, we could just mean that the bond became due. It's the maturity date of the bond and therefore we're gonna pay it back just like any other kind of loan, any other kind of liability that became due and therefore retire the bond. However, it could mean that we have a callable bond and we're re retiring the bond at some date before the maturity date. So first we'll take a look at this in terms of it's a maturity date bond and we're just gonna pay off the bond at the end of the time period. So, uh, and note that this type of transaction isn't one we often see in test questions because they're usually the more interesting stuff happens at the beginning of the bond. What's the what's going to be the cost of the bond? What's the, the discount? How do you how are you going to uh, amortize the discount on the bonds? What do the interest payments look like? The end of the bond is actually pretty straightforward because all we're doing, all we're going to do is pay off the bond amount in terms of journal entry uh, perspective. We're just paying off the bond amount that let, that looks pretty much just like a loan. So let's see what we're talking about here. We have the information on the left side. We're gonna record the journal entry here in our general journal and then post it to our worksheet, the worksheet being in order with the assets, liability, equity, revenue and expenses, debits positive, bracket, uh, credits bracketed or negative, debits minus the credits being zero, meaning debits equal the credits. Net income is currently the 700,000 minus the 17 or the uh, 682. 832. So this is just to give us something in balance so that we can see when we post these what's going to be the, what happens generally to different types of accounts, the accounting equation, and uh, the individual accounts and net income. So we have 15 year bonds, face amount 240. Uh, the issue price was 198.484. Uh, the interest and the market rates here. And uh, what we're saying now is we're going to retire the, the bond. Now, if we look at the trial balance, what does that mean? It means that the bond is on the books for 240,000 and there is no discount or premium. Why? Because we're saying it's at the end, it's, it's 15 years later now, and we've already paid all the interest and we've amortized the discount down to zero. So in order to see that, uh, if we look at our, our amortization table, the discount started at 41,516 which is 240,000 minus uh, the, the cash that was received of 198,484. And then we, we lowered that discount every six months. And we recorded a journal entry lowering it by the 1,384. So the, so the discount went away uh, each time and it was going to the uh, interest expense. So at the end of this whole time period, at the end of 15 years or 30 time periods at, at every six months, we are left with zero in terms of the uh, discount and we have the 240 then is all that's left. So now if we look at the end, we can see that the 240 bond payable looks just like a loan basically. So we're paying back the loan at the end of the time period. There's no more interest. Uh, we're, we're saying here that the interest payment has already been made so all interest has been made, all of the amortization of the bond has been made. So we're just gonna uh, record the final entry to close out or eliminate the bond. So to do that, we're just gonna say the bond payable has a credit balance. Uh, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it and debit it. So I'm just gonna copy, put the debit on top. We probably should have thought of cash first. Is cash affected? Yeah, we're paying back the bonds. So cash is gonna go down. So I'm going to copy cash, put that on the bottom because it's going to be decreasing. And the amount's just going to be for 240,000. So we'll debit 240 and credit 240. That's all there is to it. Now note that if you see this, some problems may combine the, the two. They may say, well, the final interest payment, the final amortization, uh, and the retirement of the bond is happening. 
And in that case, you would just record the, you know, the final amortization journal entry, which would bring the discount fully down to zero, and then the interest, and then record the reduction of, of the bond, paying off the bond. But uh, the actual paying of the bond, if it's fully uh, amortized, if it's the end of the time period, is similar to just paying off a note. If we were to record this, then we're gonna go to the bond table. We're gonna record this here in H6 by saying equals and pointing to that 240, bringing the 240 down by 240 to zero, putting this out of balance. And then cash is gonna be posted. Here's cash on our journal entry. Here it is in our worksheet in H3 where we say equals, point it to the 240, bringing our cash down to 664, and that puts us back in balance. No effect on net income here. We're not dealing with any interest expense. We're just paying back the principal. Now we're paying back the principal. And note here what happened with this bond is we didn't pay any of the principal through the entire uh, bond time period, through that 15 years. What we did pay was interest. We paid the rent on the money. We didn't pay back the principal on the money. Now we're paying back the original principal. Now the other way this could happen, if we could retire uh, the bond early if it's a callable bond, and so we could retire it before the maturity date. And if that's the case, then a book problem will typically give you what we're going to retire it for. In other words, it'll have to give us the amount that we're going to pay in order to retire the bond at this point in time. And once we have that, all we got to do is eliminate the bond from the books and any difference will be a gain or a loss. So in other words, if we have a trial balance, it'll show us this information. If we're talking about a book problem, it'll have to give us what we're going to retire it for, the cash we're going to pay, and then the bond you know, uh, amount as well as any discount or premium. Ours are going to be given here with the trial balance. So in other words, we can go through our questions, is cash affected? Yeah, we're going to retire the bond by paying it off early. So we're only, we're gonna pay the 230,000. So I'm gonna copy cash, and I'm gonna put that on the, I'm gonna put that on the bottom. So I'm gonna skip four lines and put it on B23, just cause I happen to know there's gonna be four accounts. Right click and paste one, two, three. And again, if you're building this yourself from scratch, you might put the cash on top and credit it. Even though it looks funny, uh, it's, it might be easier to build the journal entry. And it's better to look funny and get it right then uh, you know build it in some way where you can't get the answer so then we know the cash is going to be for whatever they gave us which is the 230 credit 230 and there we have it so then we got to take the bond off the books so we're going to retire the bond and the related discount so whatever the bond is and the related discount they need to go away so we know that the bond is on the books for uh, 240 so that's a credit, so we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, a debit. So I'm gonna right click and copy it. And put. I'm gonna put that on B21. And again, I'm kind of just making this work in terms of debits on top. Uh, if you're making this from scratch, just do it whatever way makes sense to build it top to bottom. Uh, not worrying about debits or credits going on top. Right click and paste one, two, three. It's on the books for 240, it's a liability with a credit balance, so we gotta do the opposite, 240 debit. And then the related discount or premium, this happens to be a discount, needs to go away. Uh, the only problem there in practice is that you may not have a trial balance and may not know whether or not the discount or premium is a debit or credit account and therefore, what do I do to it to make it go away? Do I debit or credit it? If you have a trial balance to give you an example, that you can see, oh, it's a debit balance if it's a discount, so I have to credit it. Uh, if you're looking at a multiple choice question, then you're just going to have to know and you, a couple things you might think about. You might say, well, I know bonds payable is a, is a credit balance account and uh, a discount should make it go down because that means that we issued it for something less. So we have so the discount must be opposite to the normal balance because these are two related and it's got to bring it down. So it's got to be a debit. On the other hand, if it were a premium, the payable is a liability representing kind of a sticker price. And if we sold it for more than the sticker price, the premium must make it go up. So it must be the same thing as a liability. It must be another credit if it were a premium. Here we have a discount. It's a debit balance. We need to make it go down. So we're going to do the opposite, which is a credit. So I'm going to copy the discount. I'm going to put that here in B22, right click and paste one, two, three. And then the amount's going to be a credit 38,748. 
And now, of course, the debits don't equal the credits. These add up to 268,748. This adds up to 240. There's going to be a difference if we highlight all of it of 28,748. That's going to be the plug. I'll do that with our plug formula. Negative sum. And then you could sum up from the bottom like this, or you can move this out of the way and sum from top to bottom. And there's our 28,748. If I highlight the whole thing, we're back in balance. And so now we're going to unpost this for now. <laughs> now we just need to know what that is. And that, of course, is going to be a gain or loss on the retirement. So when we, when we retire it, we're going to have a gain or loss. What's the gain or loss going to be? Well, it's going to be the carrying value, the 240 minus the discount or plus the premium, 201 to uh, 52 minus whatever we have to pay for it. So in this case, 230000 And, of course, if we're paying, in this case, uh, we're, we're paying more than uh, the carrying amount, this is going to be a loss. And you can also think about it's going to be a loss because it's a debit and it's going to be on the income statement. And debits are what expenses do. So that means it's a loss. If it were a credit, that means that we would have been paying less than the carrying amount and have a credit, which would be a gain on the income statement, which is kind of like what income does on the income statement. So I'm going to copy this gain or loss. I'm going to copy that, put that over here, right click and paste one, two, three, and there we have it. Now let's post this out. Here's the gain or loss. Here it is on our worksheet. We're going to be in the middle column, H30 equals this 28,748. That's going to bring this up, put us out of balance and bring net income down. So that's all, you know, it's a loss when we, when we record it because net income goes down. And then here's the bonds payable. Here it is on our worksheet. We're in the middle column, H23 equals the 240, bringing the bonds payable to zero. Here's the discount. Here it is on our worksheet. We're in the middle column, H24 equals the 38,748, bringing it to zero. And then we've got the cash going to H20 equals the 230, bringing the cash to zero and putting us back in balance.